um, we get a lot of requests from you guys to to answer questions about our workflow, how we manage to, to do photo shoots and this is when we Which came up with the idea to to start a podcast so we can answer all your questions and we are happy that we we are finally doing it. Yes. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> we are super excited and uh, quite nervous about it because we never done this before. Yeah, we need to find our voices. Yes. The first one going to be a bit weird, but <laughs> we're going to we're going to manage for us. It. <laughs> at least for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you're going to leave a comment, please be gentle. Yeah. <laughs> and don't you. forget this is our first time. <laughs> Okay, so where should we start? Maybe maybe at the beginning. Who are we? Yes. Who is Vivian and Thomas? Okay, so I'm a fashion photographer and you are a filmmaker slash podcast DJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be a weird one. <laughs> yeah. So we started to do I mean, let's 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 go back to the beginning. How okay. did you start? Because you are the first one from our our team who who started, started this this creative life. Yes. So I started uh, actually fifteen years ago. Wow. Uh, I graduated two thousand ten at the university, art university in Hungary. So I actually studied photography and. Um, I think the whole started uh, during the university when I uh, started to pick up uh, fashion jobs and started to work with uh, different magazines and uh, created uh, fashion editorials. So the whole thing is coming from there. I think it was a good environment for you since you you had the chance to to work a lot in 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 the university studio yes uh, yes it was uh, really good uh, and i'm super lucky about that because if you have no access to the equipment it's really hard to try out different things and uh, learn how to do your lightings and also it was really good because it was an art university where you can meet with fashion designers and also different artists. So actually you can do networking over mm. there. And that's how I started to do actually fashion jobs. First I did uh, for really a low rate for almost nothing to do lookbook shoots and campaign shoots for other designers who were studying over there. That's a good networking, actually. Yes, it was really good. Uh, it was more about uh, building connections and also learning about uh, how to think about a project. Because uh, I wasn't uh, specified for fashion during the university years. It was more about art photography. That was a big shift, I guess, to because it, fashion is it's a commercial thing still. Yes. Uh, what was really good, uh, we learned from the basics. So actually studied how to light uh, a still life photo. Mm. And then uh, actually I self studied how to work with the model and uh, build it up from there. But uh, we got the basics. Do you remember what kind of camera do you have at that time? During <laughs> the school years? Yes, before uh, my university, when I uh, started to build uh, my portfolio, actually to get in, um, I had a two megapixel Sony camera oh. and also I had a Canon analog camera. So I work with both and uh, my portfolio included uh, two megapixel <laughs> Sony camera wow. images and I got in, so it was enough. <laughs> 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 yeah, you you never underrate the cyber shot. <laughs> Sony cyber shot camera. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and did you work with uh, analog as well and develop films? Yes, uh, we we actually in the first two years, I actually just worked uh, with analog. Wow. And learned how to process my films. I really enjoyed uh, to use a large format camera. Wow. And also... Such a hipster. <laughs> <laughs> No, in 2010, it wasn't a hipster thing. No, it wasn't. No. And also, I don't think it's uh, <laughs> currently a hipster thing, but uh, I really love to use, uh, even nowadays, uh, my Hassa blood with uh, an analog magazine. So it gives you a really different uh, workflow. I can imagine, especially if you are coming from a, a university background that you have a different connection to this old traditional way of, of uh, taking pictures and uh, it's not just a trend for a person like who, who studied this and, and, and... No, what I really enjoyed about... Digital uh, wasn't even available, like the 2 megapixel camera was one of the first digital cameras at that time. Yes, uh, I had, I think, my first professional digital camera was a uh, Canon 6D. Uh -huh. After that, I had the 7D. Hmm. Yeah. But that was during the university years. What uh, I really enjoy about uh, large format camera that uh, you really have to plan your picture. So hmm. it's not like just capture a quick moment. You hmm. really have to build a picture up and you can take only five maximum 10 but uh, if you're gonna take 10 pictures then uh, you are wasting uh, your films yeah so actually <laughs> i i really loved if i had uh, the picture what i wanted to achieve uh, for the second or even the first time wow. i cannot imagine this um, today to do it i mean uh, clients would go crazy if you if you spend like i don't know how much uh, time just to take one picture and set up everything yes it's a completely different approach and uh, even today when i'm working with uh, digital i don't like to take 2000 picture from the <laughs> same setup i really hate that if you don't have uh, the picture within the first i don't know 10 or 20 i'm not sure if you're gonna have it and it's 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 true it's kind of uh, true yes. yeah yeah a lot of photographers like to just turn on the quick burst <laughs> <laughs> and shot like the thousand uh, row files and, and then waste time and money on, on, on i this. had a, i had a teacher once uh, said even in any family you can find a family picture which could be a masterpiece so an amateur could uh, take a really good shot if they took a lot. So yeah, it's you. <laughs> so actually, you have to be really bad if you don't have a good picture within two thousand take. So, so yeah, it's it's funny how it changed. And uh, yeah, even if you break down my uh, videos, one frame is a masterpiece. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But there is like uh, a thousand. <laughs> awful but anyway <laughs> let's uh, go, go back, back to you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so university you had the uh, the large format the film development and you had all this traditional background and then you started to do fashion yes uh, so how i started i started to work with uh, fashion designer students and then uh, moved to small magazines and uh, started to work uh, bigger names. And once I graduated, actually, I had uh, two years uh, experience with, uh, with names like um, Glamour or uh, Marie Claire. But yeah. uh, it was still a small country. So because we are originally from Hungary, if we haven't mentioned it yet. And uh, you have the limitations if you are from a small country. Yeah, there is not a lot of uh, opportunities, at, especially at that time. The biggest names was uh, Elle, I mean, Elle Marie Magazine, Claire, Marie Claire, Glamour. Yeah, but uh, yeah, 
at that time I wasn't on, on the field of filmmaking I I was a art director slash graphic designer at different uh, production companies I wasn't joined this this duo yet <laughs> I mean in personal uh, life yes because we are a couple yeah yes. we, we didn't mention that no this. so yeah that's that's also <laughs> fun fact <laughs> but yeah so now we are at uh, 2014 and you are working as a fashion uh, photographer in, in 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 hungary and uh suddenly you just moved to dubai with me i'm asking like <laughs> Actually, I'm, i wasn't there yeah, but yeah. <laughs> we moved to dubai yeah. yes uh, it was a crazy so... big leap from from eastern Europe, Europe yes. to the Middle East. Yes, yeah, so how it came up, actually, we were thinking while we were living in Hungary, how can I do fashion photography? How can I uh, work more in abroad? And uh, we were thinking to find uh, an agency somewhere. Yeah. And uh, one day, a uh, Dubai agency just contacted with us and um, invited uh, me to go to Dubai for two weeks just to build connections and see if we can uh, work together and they can represent me. So we took this chance and uh, went to Dubai together. Yeah, it so was a really we were, good experience. Yes, we were really curious about uh, the culture, the country. And then also you you heard all the crazy things like Ferraris and and gold and, b- gold <laughs> and, and the desert and and everything and it is it, true it's all true yes <laughs> so yeah it was a really big leap for for you uh, for me it's not yet but it's coming it, <laughs> but um, yeah for you uh, uh, because a lot of brands are there a lot of magazine titles are already uh, represented in in, in the in middle the east so it was a really good uh, next step in your career that to yeah especially now you know. looking back uh, it was a huge opportunity and uh, as you said, uh, there are so many crazy titles, uh, lots of jobs. So the beginning wasn't easy, but uh, once it started, uh, it was really good. I could work uh, every day. I had uh, the biggest names. Uh, and also I learned a lot because, as I said, coming from Hungary, you are limited with equipment or even uh, to work with international team. So it was a totally new experience for me, how to work uh, with uh, different uh, people coming from different culture and uh, with different backgrounds. It was really a culture shock. Like you, you met people on the same day on the same set. One is from Australia and another one is from India. The third one is from the States. Yes. So it was like an international team. Like uh, really, like a uh, like a I don't know, a, like a, a World Cup or an Olympics could be like <laughs> similar to this coming from Hungary. I and so many that. different accents, and uh, to understand everyone, <laughs> it, it, was it was really hard. So yeah, it was it wasn't easy, but uh, when I started uh, in Dubai, but it was crazy good opportunity and uh, actually we stayed in Dubai for five years yeah. and uh, how we started to work together because once we moved there you were still working with uh, different companies uh, as an art director and graphic designer but uh, around three years ago I started to receive more and more requests uh, for fashion films yeah, but before that, uh, we need to mention that uh, at one point you have the opportunity to to travel to Tokyo. Yes. And because you got an agency there and you got a job there for the first time. Yes, it was uh, it was also amazing and uh, super sad because <laughs> uh, Tokyo was always your uh, dream city, and uh, 
you still love the culture and everything about uh, Japan and uh, you always wanted to visit. And when I got the opportunity to go there, I, I went there for a job, but also I had so many free time and uh, an opportunity to explore the city. And without you, it was really hard. Yeah, I remember we had uh, Skype uh, chats like every night because the time difference, it was like, I think, 10 hours. So yeah. around midnight, you you woke up, I think, in Tokyo. I mean, oh, I cannot it was really, remember. It really but, uh, crazy because... Yes. Uh, the time difference was uh, also challenging. Uh, and uh, I really enjoyed the job and... Uh, I, I really enjoyed the fact that I can uh, travel and explore a totally different culture because of my work, spend time with the locals, um, experience their food, their uh, lifestyle. So I was really thinking if I can do this for a lifetime. And uh, the question was, okay, if I'm going to do that, then uh, how can I involve you? Because I don't want to leave actually separately and mm -hmm. travel and explore everything alone yeah it was hard because i also wanted to go freelance from i don't know from the beginning from the beginning <laughs> but um, it wasn't easy maybe because because um, i'm from hungary i don't know uh, as a graphic designer it was really hard to do a freelance business at that time so i i had to work with with good companies, but I had to uh, uh, sit in a, an office. But you started to get more and more requests to produce videos during your fashion uh, shoots. And somehow this idea just just came in into our, I don't know whose idea was originally, but uh, at one point we, we thought that, okay, what if I can do like behind the scene videos or something like that. We didn't know that it's going to be fashion film, but uh, in your years in the university, a few times I, I, I was attended on, on, on the studio shots and, and I took some behind backstage, the scene. backstage images and, 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 and some small videos with that really cool cyber shot. <laughs> <laughs> two megapixel camera <laughs> see that uh, was started all yeah so i but think we still have this camera somewhere yeah but it's I'm not not working because the <laughs> i think one time it, it it fell off and okay but i'm sure the battery is still good <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um so we think about that um opportunity because there was a there was a f editorial sh shoot uh, I think the day after. So let's just uh, paint the picture. <laughs> we were walking... Uh, In the middle of the desert. Yes. Alone. <laughs> at night. At night. And, so scary. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thinking about the future. And um, talking about... Uh, because okay. it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Um, okay, <laughs> let me go back to the picture. So we were walking and talking about uh, how can we imagine our future and working together. We were also thinking about uh, maybe you can do... Um, Assisting job for yes. you, like um, maybe retouching, because obviously, because I was, I was a graphic designer, I could do some retouch for you. Or I can be a digital assistant or On just set. an assistant. Yes. So when the idea came up uh, to do videos, actually it was during uh, Christmas time. So you had uh, uh, free time. Yeah, some day off. And uh, next day I had uh, a shoot for Harper's Bazaar India. And uh, we were thinking, okay, maybe that's a good opportunity to join me and just do some shots. If uh, it's gonna be good, then we're gonna give it to the magazine. If it's horrible, we're never gonna publish it. Yeah, but or, uh, at that time I didn't have any camera. Yeah, so that was a big struggle and... Uh, so what is your first camera? You can ask the question. Okay, so what what was your first camera? Ah, thank you for asking. It was a, 
Canon 5D Mark IV, All right. which is, I think, an, uh, an overkill for someone who's just starting. Who just started. Yeah. Okay, so just let me paint the picture again. <laughs> we were walking in the middle of the desert, it talking about uh, <laughs> talking about our future. Came up the idea to do a video and do a video tomorrow, and it was 11 p.m. So we rushed to the nearest mall. Yeah, because we are living in Dubai and all the malls were closing around 2 a.m. Or, or 2 a.m., yeah. yes. It was Christmas, so it probably... Yeah, it, it was, was 2 a.m. Yeah. So <laughs> we went to the mall, bought the camera, and next day you actually did uh, a pretty good job. And... Uh, um, Define pretty good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did it and it was published, so... <laughs> yeah, so what was your first job? It was for Harper's Bazaar India, right? Yeah, <laughs> I should quit on the top now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was terrible. I mean, the, <laughs> the end result from today's standard and, and after like five jobs later on, I, I could not look at that. Uh, but it was really a, 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 a defining moment for me that okay, this is something I, I I want to invest. I want to know more about filmmaking. And since I never learned about uh, anything about uh, filmmaking, I never studied uh, on, on the university but like you, this. But you saw a lot uh, from a photographer point of view. Uh, yeah, I learned from the best. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> not the best, but uh, you actually lived uh, a life. Uh, of an, of a, a photographer's husband. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had connections with fashion. I got uh, a huge influence from you uh, regarding aesthetics, uh, about mood, about emotions on, on your pictures. So when I started to do more and more videos, our, our main goal was, and until and, and today, the main goal is to reproduce the same visual look in, in, in photo and in, in video as well, because we wanted to match both. And uh, Yeah, how we are thinking about uh, fashion film, it can uh, give other layer to the whole story. Yeah, and and it, it was the perfect timing for for us. Uh, we didn't know that, but uh, later on, you started to get a lot of requests because everyone started to move to digital. Digital, online magazines came up, uh, Instagram Instagram stories came out, and everyone started to shoot uh, small videos, Snapchat was on, and and then we could finally offer something for the magazines and brands so they can have something more, uh, some extra content, what they can post between 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 magazines. And, and, the, and, and the magazines loved that. So they not just came out from on the first day of the month, but they can publish other uh, content and not just behind the scenes because that time everyone who did uh, videography for magazines uh, they did just uh, a behind the scene uh, videos like and uh, it's really really boring i mean you can see over and over the same thing after a while it's like uh, uh, just a repetitive thing so we came up with fashion films so we can do some uh, something with the model and, and act to the camera and maybe we can put some story in it. Let's do some like commercial looking uh, films. So Yes, because really with, uh, with photo you are always limited. Uh, even if you are in an amazing uh, environment, uh, you can just show as many as you can show in the background. But for the video, you can take uh, so many amazing B-rolls and uh, it could be so rich. And also don't forget about music. How amazing to use music during the fashion film. So it can also define the whole mood yeah. and take it to another level. Also, it was an interesting uh, experience when uh, we started to work um, together, but sometimes in some cases, uh, you had to work with other videographer and I got some requests to work with another photographer 
and although we we try to to recommend the other one because our main problem with uh, working uh, with a different theme especially if uh, the videographer is involved uh, separately it's always uh, the latest uh, time uh, they involve the videographer into the project so they are not asking uh, you who should be the model and they maybe don't care if the model could move well for the film maybe yeah. she's really good uh, on the pictures but uh, they never checked uh, if she she could move uh, well for the film yeah it's always a, a, a challenge and also if we are involved uh, together we can uh, suggest uh, how much time they should uh, leave it for the video or uh, how should we set up uh, the light so we can manage to work really easily together. Yeah, because some cases uh, when I had to work with other photographers, they had a different kind of uh, approach to the to taking a picture. And maybe they spent too much time on, on, on one image. In some cases, a photographer took like 50 minutes to, to take a picture. And then I had 10 minutes to, to do the same trick for video. And uh, maybe at that point, the, the model was already bored or tired or... It was really she, cold. It was really cold, so she's freezing and what to do. So it's not a, not a good thing to, to, to match different uh, people. And, I and, mean, and it, could, uh, it could be a fight on set, uh, even uh, from a photographer uh, point of view. If I, uh, of course, for me, if I'm just a photographer on set, the most important thing to do the best photo. Yeah. So I won't care too much if uh, the videographer... That's a normal reaction. This I is can super totally normal. understand. Yeah, but uh, if uh, I'm on set uh, as a photographer and also my responsibility to do the best video as well, I'm always uh, leaving enough time for both. I mean, that's a completely different mindset on set <laughs> to create photo and video as well. And, and for us as a duo, it's challenging, it's challenging also. but we can manage it. Yes, we, we would love uh, if we can uh, have a different uh, day just for the fashion film. Yeah, but it's really, really rare. Yeah, obviously because of budget. budget. <laughs> so it's really important to find someone who, who has the same visual taste and start to do videos as many as you can. That would be my number one uh, uh, tip <laughs> for those who are starting because, you know, the first time when I shot something, it was obviously it was the best day of my life and and the worst day as well because I was so stressed and and I wasn't happy and no you were happy just not satisfied no because I wanted to make the perfect video which is which is which doesn't exist I'm gonna uh, tell you a secret I'm also never satisfied with my <laughs> photos so it's uh, it's just you are just an artist <laughs> oh that's good to hear so but it's important to find the weak points in your work. You can be very proud of it, but be your own judge. Because that's what I did and that helped me to, to grow really fast. That I, I found uh, the weak points that, oh, the camera was shaking, the lens wasn't good, the SD card was too small and I ran out of space and I had to spend too much time to copy everything and, and format the camera and go back. So every time when I had a, a, a shoot, I tried to avoid the same problem, just one, on the next uh, shoot. So be better. And then, and then again, I found something which is not good enough and I'm working to, to avoid everything what's possible. <laughs> Yes, that's a really good tip. Yeah, so that's tip number one. So yeah, uh, let's go back for the story what we started uh, just super quickly. So we started to work together uh, as a, in a separate name. Yeah, because you you had your own name already first in Hungary and then at that time you already was a, a well-known photographer in Dubai. 
so we we started to to do the same thing uh, for for myself mm -hmm. to get a name and build up get a portfolio and grow together but in some cases the clients found only you or found only me first and when they found me they they probably they already had the photographer in mind and because i had sometimes um not very really good experience about my other photographers i wanted to avoid this to work with others not because i wanted to push you but uh, i don't wanted to risk reputation, reputation mm -hmm. if if i'm delivering something which is not on the same level what the client wants mm -hmm. and maybe it's not my fault but after the the shoot is ended you have to work what you what you shot so and also if you are not involved uh, in the in the pre-production then how can i how can i be responsible f well in one case they they picked a model who was really pretty but on camera she was horrible but but if i would be involved in the in the first place i would go for someone else who has experience mm -hmm. so that was a, a challenge for us to to manage this and um, yeah we had some uh, miscommunication and some uh, misunderstanding uh, with uh, specifically with new clients uh, from europe when you so have to explain that we are together but we are on a separated names but we are like a duo but we are not officially a duo so it was a mess Yes, it was a complete mess. And uh, actually, it took one year for us to figure it out, which is uh, a big surprise because it was so obvious uh, yeah. from the beginning <laughs> what we should do. And um, a year ago, uh, we decided to make it official. And we started to, to promote ourselves as a duo. You guys know that uh, I started the YouTube channel under my own name. And, and at one point I changed the, the channel name and the, the, the cover page to Vivian and Thomas. And, and, and everyone is asking like, who is Vivian? I, I know the, the videographer, I, I like him a lot. I was the art director <laughs> on every video. <laughs> um, yeah, she was credited before. She was on the, on the credit list every time, but uh, it was always a, a team effort to, to to do this video so that's how vivian and thomas the super team <laughs> born <laughs> and um, yeah and we are working now from i mean f now we're not working because we are, <laughs> we are staying at home during this uh, coronavirus pandemic but uh, yeah we're now working in uh, in europe we moved from dubai to berlin which was a really huge jump again yes. It was again a culture shock to come back from the desert to the the gray city, which I, I, I love because it's really similar to Budapest. But uh, now we're working a lot in, in Europe. Traveling in, a lot. In, in London, in Paris, and now we're starting to to operate more and more in Germany. And, and also we're looking for Eastern Europe and, and beyond. So... It's an interesting time we're living in. And during this coronavirus uh, pandemic, we, we thought about a lot. What can we do with our endless time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's why we came up with the idea to, to, to start to give back to those who likes our work and wants and to learn from us. us. And, and we, we get a tremendous support from, from you guys and everyone on YouTube, on, on Instagram. And, and now we, we launched our Patreon, which is amazing how, how people reacted to that one as well. And we started to create tutorials. We create and, and try to share as much behind the scene images and and tips and and answer questions as much as possible because we wanted to give back to those who who really recognize our work when we get a, a really nice comment a dm like oh you guys are inspiring me the that those comments are are, are really made our day so we we realized that 
how important to get true honest uh, uh, feedback sometimes we get negative feedback which is totally fine because no we really that's, appreciate that's uh, the negative feedbacks are as honest. well if we can uh, learn yeah from the comments it's important and and we also uh, like to practice it to to not just troll someone with negativity but to highlight something like you could do something like this so you can grow from this but yeah so we started this podcast and we wanted to to do this uh often and and and, and as many times as possible so we already asked uh on our social media if you have any questions then just let us know send us a dm comment us and and, and we you still can do that uh, and we can include it in the next episode absolutely and uh, we try to give you our honest uh, opinion or ideas if you have any questions or you want to show us your work or or you're struggling with something then just let us know and we can give you some tips hmm? another tip tip number two <laughs> equipment you don't need to stress about the equipment no i you didn't mention that no <laughs> no oh. you just mentioned what camera you had did i said i had a 5d mark IV <laughs> when it was new <laughs> oh come on <laughs> no it was this is not the message no, we no, want this is not the message uh, you should have a <laughs> anyway so you can do the best video with your with your phone in your pocket you don't need better but obviously after a while you wanted to to achieve more and for that you need to invest and it's gonna be an endless thing and obviously photographers videographers are like geeks we like to have technical stuff and gadgets but don't let to stop you if you if you don't have the best stabilizer or the best camera or don't have enough megapixels or you're not shooting in 4k or 8k or or whatever it's not about the case it's about the the picture what you have and uh, like nowadays i mean sometimes i'm shooting on a, a handycam which is really fun and yeah. which is really terrifying it was really <laughs> terrifying that I shot something, at least I, it has a, a screen so I can see what's on the <laughs> camera. <laughs> but the thing that everything is burnt in and I cannot change the expo or ISO or I cannot uh, do different color grading, that's, that's terrible for the first time. But also it gives freedom and I, I get more playful over time. and. And, and at one point, for example, I, I shot a, a fashion film on my iPhone. That was the best camera on the day. And <laughs> no, I, that was the idea, actually, to oh, try it out. It sounds much better in my head. But <laughs> anyway, we, we wanted to try how it looks. And it worked perfectly. If you saw my, my uh, behind-the-scene images, uh, obviously you see what kind of camera I'm using. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm not proud of it, that <laughs> I had to have to switch huge batteries and I'm, I'm, I'm sweating on set because the camera is too heavy. And sometimes I think I should have just a, a small Sony camera or, or anything what can record because obviously a big camera gives you a, a, a good, um, uh, representation on set you look good if you have a big camera yes. it's like uh, <laughs> it's like you're arriving with we a ferrari but uh, <laughs> you can have the best camera and even better than me and you can do the worst uh, video and you're never gonna get better if you don't understand that uh, you need to be creative and that's all what's important Yes, and also it's another point. If you reach that level that you need uh, the best uh, camera, you don't have to buy it. Actually, you just uh, can uh, rent it for the day. And uh, if the client requires it from you, they uh, have to find the budget. 
So actually you don't have to invest uh, too much money to build your own equipment if you don't want to. So don't uh, feel the pressure to buy everything or buy uh, the best cameras. Because from uh, my experience, when we used to live in Hungary, I had to build my own uh, studio because uh, that was the pressure from the clients. Uh, a lot of magazines didn't want to spend money to rent a studio for an editorial shoot. So they asked the photographer if they have the studio. And if your answer was no, then uh, it was a big chance uh, you're going to lose the job. So it was a pressure to build a studio by uh, lots of lights, uh, lots of uh, light shaping tools. Uh, and uh, when we moved to Dubai, it was a total different story. So actually I sold uh, everything. And uh, in Dubai, I didn't have to build my own studio. If the client required uh, a studio shoot, they rent it out. I actually just uh, bought couple lights because it was easier for me. But if I wanted to rent uh, every time, I could rent it uh, for the certain jobs. And uh, now we came back to Europe and we still have uh, lots of equipments, actually more than what we need. And uh, because we are traveling a lot uh, for jobs, uh, we actually cannot take uh, our own equipment. Uh, I mean, we're going to take our cameras, but uh, we cannot uh, usually take lights uh, with us. Yeah, only the essential parts. And, and I, I bought really good i don't know diffusers and, and 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 monitors and and uh i have a, a stabilizer and i never used it since i moved back because if i need one i can rent it yes exactly so there's no point anymore to to build up a huge uh, equipment park because it's not it's just not uh, feasible unless you wanted to create and, and build up a studio at one point. That's that's a different thing. Yes, that's really different. And also our experience is uh, if you have too many equipment on set, uh, of course, it could be different uh, for specific jobs. But we also like to limit it uh, because it gives you uh, less uh, freedom. Yeah. If you have too many equipment uh, with you on set. Yeah. Because, uh, for example, for f photo is one thing, but it's still manageable to to have photo equipment. Obviously, you can you can overkill that too. But for video, okay, you have a uh, let's say a director. If you go from Properly. from proper. <laughs> production point of view you have a director okay you have a dop the dop has some kind of uh, steady cam or stabilizer or handheld okay big camera big rig you need a focus puller someone needs a monitor to check it director's monitor client etc so at least at, at the end you're gonna have like 10 15 20 people on set that's not how we work Usually we work as as a as a as a one uh, as a, like a one man show. We we have we have one photographer, we have one uh, cameraman, which is me, and and I'm pulling focus. Sometimes we am pulling focus because not because we don't want to spend that much on 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 other people we would love to have extra hands on set yes and, and we love if we can have an assistant on set but sometimes it's just uh, not the case and we don't have or the client doesn't have any uh, the extra budget extra or budget for that to to allocate for extra persons and and also an extra uh, equipment could be helpful at one point but also it could be a limitation especially in studio sets I, I brought slider, stabilizer, camera one, camera two, laptop, charging station, everything, lights. And it took like one hour for me to, to set up everything. And I didn't use the half of it. Mm -hmm. Or if I used, uh, it was like a complete mess. And when I, when I, when I, when I get my, my red camera, which is extremely heavy, and I wasn't able to 
hold it for, for a long time uh, I started to think okay how can we go back to the basics how can I reuse the red camera to a cyber shot to <laughs> megapixel <laughs> camera <laughs> to to get a smaller good quality but smaller lens a good battery but smaller and don't attach too much extra monitors or things and 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 do it everything handheld because the red has the worst uh autofocus i really miss that uh, canon 5d it was a, a breeze to work with that and on red it the footage was super shaky the focus was off so i had to learn everything what i learned before and i i i practiced it and and i had to learn how to shoot handheld how to do something which is really not the best case scenario because everyone want, wanted to see smooth shots perfect focus and everything but i don't want to have the focus puller i don't want to have a ronin uh, a stabilizer or uh, a rig on me so i had to learn how to shoot handheld and i i wanted to connect this um, whole thought uh, to the uh, to what i said before that uh, if you have a cheaper camera it makes you b- a better filmmaker at one point because you learn with very limited capabilities if if you don't have the the, the best resolution you don't have uh, a, a wide range of uh, iso then you have to you have to cook what you have in in, in mm-hmm. the kitchen it's a good thing to to learn everything and use each camera and equipment to the to the maximum and don't don't go to the best one because it's an endless story so you can buy the mark 2 and the mark 3 and the mark 4 is coming out so i'm gonna gonna upgrade it and then mark 5 is coming so i'm gonna upgrade it there is no point to do it and also you have to be able to improvise on set so because some of the moments uh, what we actually pick uh, for the final uh, video it's coming from uh, purely improvisation because uh, you can plan certain things you can think about the story or you can think about uh, location but uh, what you cannot uh, prepare um how the model gonna move or uh, what's gonna be the vibe between the team on set yeah so you can never be ready for that uh, and of course you have to make uh, lots of effort uh, to create a really good environment on set so the model can uh, lose herself and uh, can be natural and also can give her best on the day and uh, you're gonna actually be a friend with her in the end because there is a special connection within the photographer and uh, with the model yeah it's really intimate yes in a, and in it, a way. It, it has to be because uh, what is missing uh, from uh, lots of commercial jobs because there are so many people on set uh, you really have to create the best picture and everything has to be perfect then you're gonna lose something realness soul soul actually <laughs> from the footage even if it's photo or a, a film you really have to be able to give uh, freedom for yourself and uh, for the model and also sometimes uh, the best uh, thing could happen if you let yourself to do a mistake yeah i'm not uh, talking about a technical mistake sometimes it is sometimes I mean, it is it could be but uh, <laughs> some of my bad shots are, are came from from a mistake like i, sh- I used shots uh, in one of the louis vuitton film what i shot in paris and i just forgot to 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 stop recording and i just <laughs> hold the camera and it was like a shaky footage when you saw cars are are passing by Mm -hmm. and when i went home i I saw it and and, oh my god it looks really cool Mm -hmm. it gives you some dynamic Mm -hmm. feel i mean uh, you you cannot show something like this for for a long time but as a cutscene 
it works really well. And and sometimes when the model is 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 doing something crazy or or, or you want to turn to the left and she she messes up and she turns to the right and she's laughing at you and that's oh we we screw this up maybe that's Sometimes the shot I, I left it in and it looks really good and some cases people wanted to to capture the same thing and they thinking that okay i'm 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 planning everything in a, in a, like a storyboard and okay, I need a, a smiling uh, scene and the model should be smiling and then you need a shaky footage and then we're going to shot something, a bird is flying. And no, maybe those are not planned in, in advance. Mm -hmm. And and in 95% of the of time, it's not planned in our case. We have a mood board, obviously. We have something in mind, but... You know, if I see a location on, on a nicely took picture, I can plan something. But when I when I arrive and it is dark and it doesn't look like that, then maybe we're gonna say, okay, we're not gonna shoot it. So mm -hmm. you need to improvise all the time, and yes. and that's that's and, key. And sometimes uh, our all day is uh, about uh, problem solving. Yeah. Oh my God. Because uh, the dress is never perfect, or maybe doesn't look good on the model. It yes. doesn't fit. It happens. Yes, <laughs> or maybe the location is not the best for us. So it it's a or it's just raining. Or oh, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my God. So it's just a lot of. Uh, Factors, but uh, sometimes you cannot uh, control and cannot prepare for that. Maybe Just it's gonna be better than yeah. you ever planned <laughs> yeah. or imagined yeah. before. You need to double down that. So if it's raining, then you don't you don't need to try to hide that it's raining. Then let's go outside. Let's run in the rain. Let's let's do some crazy shit. Yes, and that's gonna be the best thing you 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 could imagine. So that's. Tip number three, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. We are we are over an hour now. Probably half of the people are sleeping. <laughs> uh, okay. So maybe we should say goodbye. Say goodbye for now. I hope you enjoy the this, first episode. This first crazy uh, episode, and we're gonna come back with the second one. We already have some questions from you guys, but we're still waiting for more and we wanted to to address everything. <laughs> yeah, so if you have any questions, just let us know in a comment or uh, send us an email or find us on uh, Instagram. So let us know if you have any questions and uh, stay safe and healthy and uh, see you in the next time. See you guys.